I'm John Harlan, and I'd like to explain a little bit about how climbing works. I'm um, here with Jochen Hemled, who will be climbing with me in this next section. I'm actually going to use sort of an old-fashioned, very basic uh, harness. Just wrap around my waist. This is called a carabiner here. Leg loops so that if I'm suspended from the rope in a crevasse or hanging a bit on a belay or falling, then the weight will go onto the legs instead of from my waist. Climbing rope, which is actually dynamic. It's important that these ropes stretch if you put a lot of weight on them. The different knots that are used for tying in, but the standard these days is uh, called a figure eight. You first make a figure eight like that, and you pass it through your harness and you follow the rope around like this and it becomes a figure eight knot like that. The helmet protects you in two ways, three ways actually. One is against rocks that would fall from above and you don't want them to hit your head so they bounce off the helmet hopefully. And another way is if you fall and then hit the side of the, the rock and you bong into it um, like that. It's much better than hitting your skull. And what was the third one I thought of all of a sudden? Uh, rocks hitting your head, bouncing during a fall. Maybe it's just two. <laughs> okay, and then Joachim will put me on belay so that he'll feed the rope out to me as I'm climbing. And then if I were to fall, then he would um, hold on and catch it. And there's various ways of doing it. He's doing it with a knot called the Munter Hitch. In Europe, you'll find lots of bolts, uh, which I won't be finding much in the mountains because these are more in the rock climbing areas. And so that's a very secure anchor that you could clip to. <clears throat> Take the carabiner, opens like that, like a safety lock or a safety pin, and it clips through. And then you take the rope and clip it through here. And then the rope slides up with me. And if I were to fall, then it goes down like that. But most places where I go, there won't be a bolt like this. So I'll show you with the uh, other type of gear here with a camming nut. That is an active nut here because it expands. And this uh, passive piece of protection, the eccentric nut here that you can put into a crack. They're very easy if the crack is just right for it, if it pinches or if it's fit just right. But otherwise, like that, you can see it's there, but it's not gonna hold very well. So now, before I start climbing, I'd confirm with Jochen on belay, Leon. And now I'd say climbing so that he knows. And and looking for little edges. And, and when I get up high enough that I'd be worried about another fall, then I would put in another piece of gear to make sure that that would keep me from hitting the ground if I were to fall. And when Jochen comes up, he'll take out the equipment. And here we are at the top. Here we go. Then we have our traditional summit handshake. The important thing with rappelling is keeping your body weight out away from the rock. A lot of people, when they're beginning, they're leaning in too far and their feet keep slipping. Crampons give grip on ice and hard snow. They just fit onto your boots. The other tool you'd have with when you're going crampons is ice axe. Uh, this would go into the ice and, and hold. And you see these little teeth, they help to hold, and then you can have two of them and go like that. I hope you've learned a little bit about the technical parts of climbing when it gets a little steeper and we have to use protection to make it safe. And thanks to Joachim for joining me for this section. You're welcome. It's always very important who your climbing partner is. You need to trust them with your life, quite literally. Mm -hmm.